it's almost become a fact that you should or need to stretch if you're a runner. But is it really as important as most people seem to think? And does all runners benefit from stretching? If you google, ask a friend or even an expert on how to prevent running injuries, how to become a faster runner or how to warm up properly, many will get the same answer. Stretch, stretch, stretch. I also thought this was true for a long time, but after doing more research over the last couple of years, becoming a physiotherapist and working with world-class runners, I've gotten a very different opinion. If you're new here, hi, my name is Göran, and besides being a physio, I'm also a running coach and an athlete myself. And I used to struggle a lot with different types of running related injuries. But over the last two and a half years I haven't gotten a single serious uh, running injury. And I've actually been able to run every single day. And I also finished an extreme 100km mountain ultra marathon and I have crushed most of my personal best. And here's a secret. I almost haven't stretched at all all and have done no static stretching whatsoever this last uh, couple of years. Before we start to debunk what stretching does to our bodies and what the evidence says about stretching for runners, I want to tell the story of how I got hooked on stretching about 15 years ago. I went to a high school with an elite sports program and all of us orienteering runners who started the program were put through a mobility test when we first started. And after the test we got different types of stretching exercises to do. And I who already then struggled with all types of different running related injuries went hard at it and thought that the physios who assigned these exercises to me are pros and must be right. So obviously I need to do a lot of this. And even though religiously doing these exercises every single day my injury problems didn't go away. And at the time I thought that uh, there must be something wrong with me, that my body simply isn't made for running. What I also found really strange uh, and frustrating was that I saw that many of my training buddies uh, who got a way worse test score than me in this test still had way less problems with running injuries. Five years later, when I was in physio school, I came across a study that examined this exact movement screening test and how good it was at predicting running related injuries. And the really interesting thing that they found out in the study was that the worse you performed in the test, the less likely you were to get uh, injured. So it was the exact opposite correlation to the one that the expert physios uh, was claiming some years earlier when I did the test uh, myself. But how is this possible? Is it good to be stiff? In a way it actually is, because getting stiff in certain muscles and tendons is a natural adaptation in our bodies to running. Our bodies are in many ways so good at adapting to what you do to it. That is also why training works and why you get faster from running a lot. If you put your body under some stress, you tell it to get stronger and more efficient in the needed areas to be able to take more of the same stress in the future. When running, our bodies use our tendons as elastic springs to absorb the impact from landing and to return that energy and repel us forwards. A good example of this is the Achilles tendon that really works like a spring each time you hit the ground with your foot. So being stiff in the right parts of your body is actually crucial to a good running economy. And after working with world-class athletes I'm yet to find one really good runner that is not also more stiff in some parts of their body when compared to non-runners. But don't listen to me and my anecdotal experiences. There have actually been studies proving this very same thing. Treherne et al did a study on this and concluded that the significant relationship demonstrates that the less flexible distance runners tended to be more economical possibly as a result of the energy efficient function of the elastic components in the muscles and 
tendons during the stretch shortening cycle. And this stretch uh, shortening cycle is this kind of a spring effect I talked about uh, earlier. So should you never stretch? Well, it's not uh, that simple. So let's break it down to different scenarios. Let's start with a topic we already have touched on. Does general stretching reduce your risk of running related injuries? In a review by Schreider et al, they concluded that the basic science literature supports the epidemiological evidence that stretching before exercise does not reduce the risk of injury. And the direct effects of stretching could actually lead to a greater risk of injury. Because the receptors in our muscles that tell uh, our brains that a uh, muscle is stretching out uh, too far and uh, have to stop, uh, it gets delayed after doing static stretching. Another thing that happens directly after static stretching is that you can use less of your muscle fibers. In several studies there has been a drop in motor unit activation by as much as 25%. This also leads me to the next scenario. Should you stretch your your warm-up to increase your performance well obviously if you want to perform at your very best it's a really bad idea to do something that makes it harder for your body to recruit all of your muscle fibers in a review on this topic by Conrad et al in the studies they went through on static stretching there was an average running performance decrease by 1.7 percent however they also found that dynamic stretching actually improved performance so what's the difference between dynamic stretching and static stretching? This is typical static stretching of the hamstring muscles where you just uh, stretch out the muscles without uh, moving. And this is dynamic stretching of the hamstring muscles where I use the opposite muscle, the quadriceps, to stretch out the muscles I want to stretch and I keep a movement all the time. So if you want to do some mobility work before your runs, I would highly recommend to do it dynamically like uh, this for example. And not those classical static stretching exercises like uh, this one for example. So is static stretching never a good idea? Well, if you just do general static stretching without knowing why you do it, except that you think you need to because you do a lot of uh, running, I would say stop it based on the current evidence. But that doesn't mean that not some people really could benefit from some more mobility work. Especially because most of us spend all of our days uh, sitting down. And this could lead to stiff hips, for example. And some of us get specific problems because of different stiffnesses we have in our bodies. And then, of course, mobility work can be a really good thing and a part of the solution. But I would always use more dynamic movements to work on mobility and not those classical static stretches. And we need to remember that all of us are different. For example, I am naturally really flexible, which has actually been a part of me struggling with many running related injuries in the past. So for me, I really need to keep my mobility work to a minimum, especially if I want to perform at my very best and have a good running economy. But for some people that are more naturally stiff, it might be needed with some more regular mobility work to keep some aches and problems away. For you who are runners that don't have any specific problems but still feel bad because you don't put in enough time and effort into those boring static stretching exercises that everybody tells you to do. Hopefully this video can relieve your bad conscience. And I hope you found this video interesting and helpful. If you did, it's always really appreciated if you hit that uh, thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel. And if you want to watch another video from me, you can click here or here. As always, thanks for watching, train smart, have fun, and I will see you in the next video.